If you've ever walked along Crystal Pier, you've probably seen the Crystal Pier Bait and Tackle Shop. It's been around since 2009. Now, owner Pam Taylor tells me she's being forced to shut down, and she's devastated. People love this place. I don't know what to say. It's breaking my heart. For Pam Taylor, the Crystal Pier Bait and Tackle Shop isn't just a business. It's a place that holds a lot of memories, both for her and the people it serves. There's not a day that goes by that People don't come in here and tell me how this is the first place we visit. Pam's son James started the business in 2009 after he learned to fish here as a kid. In 2017, James died. Pam's been running it ever since. I consider it to be my son's legacy. His main ambition was to help single moms when they came out here with their kids to go fishing. You may remember Pam from a story we did with her back in January after she obtained surveillance footage and used social media to track down the driver who hit her grandson while riding an e-bike in Pacific Beach. As for her shop, it's considered part of the Crystal Pier Hotel and Cottages, which leases the land from the city of San Diego. As part of the original agreement, instead of paying a standard rent, Pam's son gave 10% of his monthly gross income to the hotel. That money was then turned over to the city. After James died, Pam claims she requested her name be added to a new lease, but was given the runaround. Since then, nothing has changed. That is, until May 15th, when she received this letter from the hotel telling her to pay an extra $1,000 a month on top of the 10%, or leave by May 31st. It's impossible for me to pay that rent. All I asked for was to be considerate and follow the law and give me at least a 30 or 60 day notice, not a 15 day notice. I reached out to both the hotel and the city by phone. A hotel manager referred me to the city. By email, a city spokesperson told me, while this is a dispute between Crystal Pier and their subtenant, the city has reached out to both parties in the hopes of facilitating resolution. Based on available information, the city consented to a month-to-month -month sublease in 2014, and notice to vacate was issued to the subtenant by September 30th, 2022. Pam isn't hopeful her business will be saved, but the worst part, she says, is breaking the news to her customers especially the youngest ones she's watched grow up. And I don't know how I'm going to tell some of the little kids that I'm not going to see them anymore.